Hello everybody. That's right. We're mid-September. Let's go do the middle of the month garden tour and see what's new and what's not new. Hmm. Later. Well, here we go. Mid-September already. Can you believe it? I'm going to start in the front yard. Let me say hello, hello everybody. I'm going to start in the front yard and show you that I'm just starting to work on the yard. Now, I haven't planted anything in these black tubs yet because I'm still not exactly sure where I want to place them. But look what they're so good for. While they're here, I'm cleaning up the old leaves and I'm filling these up and then I'll decide where I want to drill the holes because I may want to direct them one way and feed something next to it. But see now, double duty, you don't throw any leaves away. So I'm cleaning up the garden here with the pools and cutting squash leaves and celery leaves that are growing here, and even a little bit of broccoli, and I'm putting it into the tubs. So it's gonna be perfect. Then I'm gonna throw on top some kitchen scraps and maybe some wood chips or not and just let it decay until I am ready to start planting in it. Look at over here, we have a squash. And what is that? That is a hybrid zucchini. But that's going to make the greatest zucchini whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever. So that's going to be really, really good. I can make a zucchini cake out of it. I can uh, put it into things in my chicken patties. Anything I want. It's going to taste the same. But there it is. And I can pick that anytime. And the skin should be tough enough to save so I don't have to use it right away. I can leave it on the kitchen counter for a month or so. Let's see. You know, some of you have said, oh, you're so lucky. You don't get powdery mildew. Of course I do. And when I do, I just trim them off or I leave them. It just depends. It, it also depends on where you are and what's causing it. What's causing it here, and I don't want to shine my camera through the sun, but look at that. That's what's causing it here. I have three giant pine trees in the front yard. And I had the opportunity from the city once they came to take some of them out and I said no. They were going to pay for it. I let them take one because it was leaning on the electrical wires. They wanted to take the second one, but it wasn't bothering anything. And I don't know. We, I, I like it. I really like it. It makes the house here kind of a cabin feel. I love the, the glass opening on the top. And you can look out and see the beautiful pine trees. So why would I want to cut them down? Are they good for the garden? No. But, you know, I'll work with them. This is the front yard. So here I'll see what grows best and I'm hoping to do some lettuce. I'm even gonna try spinach that doesn't do well here. But you know, maybe under the pine trees it will. There is that pit that my daughter found somebody threw out and I'm going to grow lettuce in there to keep the rabbits out. So that I moved a couple things in here. I think I've got parsley growing and I already have lettuce. I threw some seeds in there. So little bits of romaine lettuce is coming up. So the front yard, nothing yet, you know, nothing that new, but I am setting it up. No hurry. It's not like I'm starving and I need the food. I'm sure the rabbits are waiting in line. I've even got a little popolo growing down there with the cactus. That grew from seed in that flower pot. And it came up and Gary said, you really need a cactus? I said, yeah, it grew from seed, I like it. So it's got a friend, it's got a popolo. Okay, let's continue on. And I'm going to get in the bricks here. I've got garlic chives growing. And I'm gonna get more walking onions. Now I think the walking onions like a little more sun and the garlic chives don't seem to mind, but they do suffer a bit in too much shade and that I have seen. So they don't want too much shade garlic chives. They, they don't mind some shade, but too much shade is not that good. See, here's walking onions. I have to cover them because something decided to want to eat it. See? Here's a walking onion that got eaten off the top. Probably a rabbit or a squirrel. And this is green sorrel. So I'm going to try different things in here. I want to grow edibles in there. Oh, look at who's here. Are we here visiting? No, we're not visiting. This is your turf and I'm bothering you. Okay, we'll leave you alone. They're very territorial. These blue bellies, they decide what's theirs and it will be the same lizard living there and on the same spot. When they find a rock or a tree stump, it becomes theirs. And they, 
they'll even try to scare me off because it's theirs. So that's what he was doing. I'm walking through his turf. There's my basil from last year that came back. And look, it's flowering. And I'll take that off. I grew some basil from seed. <laughs> I didn't even know. Gary asked, what's growing in this pot? And I said, oh, I think it's mint. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, well, what else could it be? And I checked it. I threw some basil seeds in there, and I've got basil growing. So I'll have to show you that. Okay, this is peppermint. You've seen that every garden tour. And this is the fig tree that is dormant. Not dormant. This is the fig tree that is stunted because it's in a tiny pot. Had I had this in the right spot, it would have been eight feet tall. I just don't know where to put it yet. And there's more stevia growing in there with the mint. Of course, you know my you know, the midnight snack. Tomatoes have been doing great. They do turn reddish when they're ripe. And they're black in the beginning, but they're really good. I just have to get them before the squirrels do. And I have seen the squirrels on my camera. I didn't videotape it. Come over and grab it. And it's so funny if they hear somebody coming, they're pulling. It looks like a cartoon. Trying to pull as fast as they can and as hard as they can because they want to get that tomato and they want to get out of here. So, okay, there's my monkey holding up my tomato plant. Okay, let's swing you around. Okay, now we're here, which again is my stevia. It's probably going to die back in a few months, but we'll see how it keeps going with each garden tour. Right now it's doing really, really good. This is some mint that I stuck in some containers. I want to do a video on that because I want more people to do that. Okay, then I've got my ginger and of course all my turmeric and we can't even get in there. It's turned into a jungle. And I'm very lucky it grew really, really well because you've got to be careful what you buy from the grocery store because so much of it is irradiated and some of it will not grow. Some of it will grow, but it won't grow good. So I'm hoping these will take hold really good like they did last year. Of course, I did plant my own ginger, so I know that's good. And then I'll plant from that. Okay, now let's go into the main yard. Walking onions, more mint. Let's see, I've got got uh, my squash in here growing. As you can see, we're still growing squash. I've got that covered in tulle. And that will keep the vermins away from that. And there's, of course, more squash. And there's even a round cucumber there. Look at that. And there's probably more in there. I've got to get in there. And of course, my field of dinosaur kale all along the back there. Wow, that's over three years old now, I believe. Now, once the weather changes and cools down, that's going to get really big leaves and get real rich green blue. Oh, look at the hummingbirds. They're visiting the feeders. I've got feeders all over, so they don't have to congregate all on one. But I have a feeling somebody took that one and it belongs to somebody, so we'll see. And they do do that. Okay, there is the basil that grew from seed. I wasn't even paying attention. And this is basil. I just normally I throw the seeds around and they don't grow. I think things eat them when they're tiny and that one grew. There's a squash plant that grew a lot of squash. I trimmed it back and we'll see if we get any more squash this season. And of course a field of papaya trees. There's some dinosaur kale I'm rooting from cuttings. There's some papalo. And here's that water fountain I did a video on. Isn't that cute? I love it! in a bucket. I don't even have to look at it for days and days and days. Don't have to bother with it. That's what I like. Things I can just set up and forget. And then when I'm going through my garden, I can dump the bucket out, rinse it out, and start over. Isn't that cute? I, I am going to make so many bucket ones. I'm even going to change some of the ones I've got that I've made before. All right. And then we've got the curly kale back there, and we've got some dragon fruit that has been throwing flowers, so we'll see what happens. One of the flowers disappeared because a squirrel ran off with it. Let me swing over here. Green sorrel, which we use for a lot of things. And then celery has come up all over. That's because we have seed everywhere. I think this tomatillo is done, but we've got a lot of them and they're full. See how they're purple inside. Okay. I'll have to pick those and keep a couple to throw out later to grow again. This is all romaine lettuce. That's all seeds. So I've got to collect that. Celery, celery, and there's that spinach, strawberry spinach. Okay. Now, my lemon verbena, isn't that beautiful? That's in a pot in my containers. I love growing that way. This way I could just compost around inside the big container in place, just dump, you know, dig a hole, dump, and cover it back, and the plants love it. 
Again, celery seed. Looks like something dead. Nope. This is celery seed. Look at that. It's very fine. And then I've got sprouting broccoli. I've got melons growing down there. The Korean melons, peppers. And let's see what... Oh, my mushroom plant, which I can't even get into. I've got two of them. This is a mushroom plant. It's green. Perfect to put in stir-fry, eggs, anything you want. Don't forget, you never throw these away. You can, you can throw brown leaves back into your plants. All right. That's a purple kale. But the mushroom plant, yes, yeah, stir-fry, and it tastes like mushrooms. It just tastes exactly like mushrooms. Okay, let's swing back around. All right, so we've got some more zucchini, probably a hybrid, because I have gotten zucchini off that. Then I've got mint, and then I've got my tomato plants. Let's see, this all over the ground, you already know, is orange mint. We haven't even made any tea this year from the orange mint. Gary likes spearmint and chocolate mint the best, and peppermint. I am still waiting for the purple broccoli to do something. I do see the stems are purplish. Not one broccoli head yet, so we'll see what happens with that. I bought it as purple broccoli. It grew purple, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we'll see. Again, more cuttings from the dinosaur kale. It's so easy. Just take a cutting and stick it in a pot. More mint all over. That's a Korean melon. Kind of skimpy, but we'll see if it grows. I've got Korean melons growing different places. On my deck, I have Korean melons. I've got one that's almost ready to pick. Okay, this is all my sprouting broccoli, all back there. Again, probably about three years old. And this will fill out and change as the weather changes too. And I do not pull things out and b make a new garden. That's not the way I garden. I garden like a permaculture garden. When it's growing and it's doing good, it stays. There's another one of my buckets. You've seen that on the video. I love this. Okay, I don't want to stay too long on this, but I absolutely love the buckets. It's just the easiest thing, and you just stick your solar panel on the top, no electricity, and move it anywhere you want. I still have yet to put any soil of any type in there. Things are growing. Got a lot of celery in there and collard growing in there. I set it up, and I didn't know what to put in there. I should have put squash. Um, let's keep going. And the birds are all trying to come in. They want to take a bath. Look at that, they're in the trees. You probably can't see them, but they're in the trees. They want to come to the bowls because I've left out food for them. And they know that. Okay, more squash came up here. This is also melon. I've got a melon in here. Korean melon. That's really the only melons I want to grow. And they just grow so beautiful. They're small, they grow so fast, and they're sweet like honey, and they're so good. Why would anybody want to grow a great big one and wait and wait and wait? But, you know, everybody's got their own thing. Don't want to tell anybody what to do. Because I've thought about watermelon, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay, tomatoes. That's that field of tomatoes from over a year ago that I staked up. Still going strong. I do have to wrap some of the big ones now in tulle because they'll get it before I get it. But this works. And I will make a video on that, where to get it, how to get it, and how to use it, because you really need to use that if you have any issues with anything. Okay, let me back up here. And here we've got more collard. Got walking onions everywhere. They all walking onions, but there's my pepinos. We have picked some, and we have eaten some. So that's been fun. Another bucket, you've seen the video, I'm sure. Look at that, little birdhouse brought the tubing from the bottom through the bottom of the birdhouse and just wired it up on the top. And that thing goes all day and the birds come to it and I just love it. Okay. Oh, the, see this one? I've had this forever. This is like one of my first ones. I actually had this in the house. See how shallow it is? This thing has to be filled a couple times a day on a hot day because the birds go in there, they take a bath, they drink, the bees come and take a little water and it's, well, it's not work, but you have to come out here and, and you know, add water. And that one, I do not. And it stays cooler because there's more water. All right, there is my curry plant. Still haven't used that yet, but I like it. And there's a fig tree growing in there. Oh my gosh, there's a big fig tree growing in there. Ah, oh, it's going to be a pain to get out. All right. Let's see. Swing over here. More tomatoes, another broccoli, 
sweet potato I did not plant probably came up in the compost and again that's all celery there and this one's not doing that well I'll have to move this this is that strawberry spinach but the other stuff's doing good you may not like where it's at all right now let's see more water fountains I have water fountains all over my yard and I'm sure you all know that I just love my water fountains so the birds have a lot of different places they can go water fountains and hummingbird feeders look at that let me see if I can zoom in hummingbirds to me are just as important as bees to bring to your garden they're great pollinators they're great for eliminating small insects because that's what they eat they're not just eating the nectar that we're putting out that's not their main diet they're protein eaters too and they need it and that's where they're getting their vitamins from done a whole video on that on exactly what they need and what they're doing so I really love hummingbirds and I do plan on getting another video together there's been 600 statements actually with 665 statements and questions on one of my videos on hummingbirds and boy do I have a lot of answers and thoughts on that okay watch for that I'm going to get that together I hope very very soon fountains everywhere don't worry if it grows you know some algae that's not going to hurt anything that's natural and it's running water it's fine but you can always wash it out let's see eggplant I and mean, we're full of eggplant a more eggplant than we can ever use and I do chop it up the yellow ones and I do compost them again this is a hybrid zucchini See, I had to pull tool around it because I don't want to lose it to the rabbits who found out my bad I've been leaving them out eggplant look at the coloring on that oh my gosh look at that is that not beautiful it's gonna taste the same as the zucchini but it's still beautiful and I've got strawberry mint there and that here I've got chocolate mint and here I don't know oh it's a bean I throw green beans everywhere see it? this is green beans they're drying out so I've been grabbing the beans and throwing them around and then they come up everywhere and I forget I planted it sage more garlic chives and there's a tomato plant back there okay swing around okay now we're back where the eggplant was and my other fountain this one's one of the favorites of the birds and yes I do have to add water in in midday but you know what they really love this one so I would never change this one I like this one I picked that one up at a thrift store for really cheap and it's cement it's hard as a rock so I like that and look at this one this one I got at grocery outlet I had a coupon that day and this lady and I were standing there staring at it and said look how beautiful it was and it was like $15 and we had a coupon to get $5 off so it was $10 and the way the water comes down through the top now it didn't come with a solar pump it came with a regular electric pump but I swapped it and I love that one so that's another one I really like anyways yes I love my solar pumps all over the ground here is spearmint and it is going everywhere but I'm letting it do this we use so much spearmint that is one of Gary's favorites and I make my tea out of that I'm telling you I'm a very hyper person and if I get upset I you know you'll know it <laughs> I'll get upset because I'll, I'll vent I don't stay mad or anything like that but I'll vent I'm telling you this is no joke that when I'm sipping on tea and I mix this in with lemon verbena and some stevia it seems like nothing really bothers me that much I mean it, it bothers me but it seems like I'll think more and think okay that didn't work out let's just go back and do it again I love my tea and my spearmint I've gotten really used to it I was really crazy about the chocolate mint tea but now that I've been drinking more of the spearmint I actually like the spearmint better oh look at this this is flat leaf parsley and it's gone the seed I had problems with parsley for the past couple of years because the swallowtails were coming in and laying their eggs and I had did not want to get rid of those caterpillars and so I let them stay here and they were doing their thing and they were eating up all my parsley parsley is not their favorite but since she couldn't find whatever she really wanted to lay her eggs on she laid it on my parsley and so they were like dill and they had eaten up all my dill so they start eating up all the parsley and so I lost out on parsley I think the birds are eliminating a lot of the butterfly caterpillars so I haven't seen as many and so I've got parsley now growing everywhere oh well you know it changes every year year to year you never know what's going to be 
Okay, I've got a small tree colored back there. I've got beans growing all over back there on the fence that Gary put up there. And let's see, there's that tower thingy I made here. I can't get in there, there's no way. And then I've got that kind of overgrew. That's the uh, dazzling blue kale, which is out of the small tower. I'm probably shaking the camera too much, sorry. So I've got to stake that up because I don't want to take it out. It's, it's huge. So I'm going to leave that. And again, I love using containers. Everybody does their own thing because I know that plant is on its way out. It's three years old and it's on its way out. Oh, maybe. I'll trim it down. But I like using containers because I can compost next to the plants and not bother the plants at all and their roots are underneath and they'll be grabbing all the way around. Can you compost in a container with plants? Yes. If you do not have your plants in containers in the container, just dig a hole next to the plant and dump your kitchen scraps in there and bury it. I do it both ways. Either way will work. See what I'm doing here? Slowly filling up this little mini tower I'm making and I'll put something on the top there where this little bunny is. Nothing's in there yet. Okay, most of those are done. I've had a lot of zucchini and different squash back there out of it. Most of them were hybrid zucchini. The tomatoes have gone wild everywhere. They're on the other side of the wall. I went back there, they're everywhere. So, I'm gonna have to stake this up. I am really sorry, but my voice is dry this morning. <clears throat> I got bit by something last night. That's, I really don't wanna get in front of a camera. Uh, my face looks black, I'll explain that later. And I, I don't know if it's affecting my voice or, or what, but my voice is dry, so sorry. Okay, I staked that up last night. Oh yeah. Okay, I climbed back there last night in the dark and I staked up my tomato. I completely forgot about that. It was dark, it was late. So that's maybe where I got bit. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Last night something bit me in three places. And I do not think it was a mosquito because this morning my whole chin swelled up. It was numb from my chin to my ear, and then on the side of my face, it's a great big welt. It must be the same thing bit me, and then on the top by my neck. And last night I knew there was something, but I wasn't sure what was going on, it was swelling up. So I got bit probably by a spider back there. I am sensitive to spiders, that I do know, certain spiders. Okay, anyways, I'll explain the bite later. Here's my tomato plant. A small one is taking off now. That's really nice. See this water fountain that I put together? It does splash out a little bit and I have to keep adding water and the hummingbirds come and take a bath on top. I am going to redesign this and I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole on the bottom of this bowl. I'm going to sit the bowl on top of a bucket and I think I'm going to redesign it so the water goes back into the bucket. So even if a little bit splashes out, it should be able to go for days and days without me even thinking about it. So I'm going to redesign that one. And again, there's my big tree collard. Isn't that beautiful? Of course, the purple ones are beautiful too. They're big and tall. Let's see. I'm not even going to try to climb back there right now. There's more stuff growing back there. I've got more kale in there and more containers. And here's my field of collard in the ground, it's massive. I love collard for composting. And I, I'm gonna have to do a, something on that because people are using something else and I think the, some, this is better than the something else. We'll get into that another time. These are beans growing all over here. This is that three tower thing I made the video on and it's growing beautiful. Look at the purple basil which is in a teeny pot. It's in the original pot I bought it in at the nursery, the purple basil, but the roots have left the pot. There's no way to get in there anymore. It's in there. Let me move this. See, that's the pot. It came in that pot, and I just stuck the pot there because I know how plants are and the roots left, and look how massive this thing is. It goes all the way around. Isn't that something? You don't even have to plant anything. Bring it home, put it in a, one of your compost containers and leave it. This way if you get tired of it, you don't like it, you pull it out. Nothing to do. It's so easy. But anyways, um, let's see, we've got all kinds of stuff growing in there. But I made the video on this and it's just working beautiful. These are carrot seeds. And that's from a carrot top. I bought some organic carrots at the store and I took the top and I planted it. 
and the top is down there and it's growing flowers and hopefully I'll get some seeds out of it soon. Let me walk through here. Okay, this is red Swiss chard and it's going to seed big time. It has been going to seed. It's been going to seed for over two months now, it seems like. Okay, let me step around here. Same old, same old that you've seen from last month. Um, I've got, well that in there is celery, but I also believe that some of my celery hybridized with parsley and it will do that. So you can end up with this stuff that looks like celery down there. It's kind of a cross the taste between parsley and celery and it's great for cooking, but it, it just won't get that big, which is really nice. And let's see, and here is the papaya tree. We've done the video on that one, how Gary busted the bottom so this papaya trees or plants can leave. And look at this. This is not even a year old. Isn't that something? It's not even a year old and it's got all these flowers. Both of them. These two. So I don't know if he's going to end up taking out the third one, if we should cut it out. There's no way to get the third one out. See, it's broken the pot. Let me see if I can get you in. Look at what it's done. On its own, and we already know there's a hole on bottom. We cut it and it's gone. It's gone into the ground. So this papaya is in the ground and we're going to leave it. Is it wrong? It's my way. So everybody's got their own way. Again, I will never tell anybody what to do. I may strongly suggest but I will never, never tell anybody what to do. Look at the pods on this. Massive, massive pods. We're going to have so many seeds. Oh, and there's a hummingbird up there. Let me see if I can get up there and see him. Okay, he left, he was there. I think I might've gotten him. We're gonna have so many seeds, this is unreal. And I didn't even know if I was ever, ever, ever gonna be able to grow one of these. Isn't that something? And there's two of them in there and it's growing in my compost bin. That is a trash can that's been cut in half, so there's another half somewhere. And I put two Moringa seeds in there. It's been 100% germination. Two Moringa seeds, and they both came up in the compost bin. Now, that compost bin does not have a bottom, so there's no doubt that they have long left the area, and they're way down. So they have a massive root system, and that's why they're so well known for their broad spectrum vitamins and everything and minerals they pull up because they really send out a great root system on this. And yes, do I use it? I even add them into our tea. So yes, I do use this. And the birds love this tree. This tree is full of all kinds of birds, bees and birds. There's not too many bees right now, but the bumblebees come, carpenter bees, honeybees, uh, native, we've got some little native bees, we've got mockingbirds and hummingbirds and bush tits and uh, all of them, the gross beaks, they all hang out. Let me see if I, I guess, by the time I try to zoom in on him, he'll be gone. This is almost like the tree of life. It just brings so many birds. Now, the downfall on this tree is nothing, well, I can't see nothing. The plants, a lot of them will not do well. My Korean melons obviously are doing well. Let's see if I can get in here. See? The Korean melons are doing fine. So they can be in partial shade. But, and of course there's an avocado tree growing in my compost bin back there. Um, the tomatillos, this is a big tomatillo plant. Not, why, well, okay, I'm wrong. I see a tomatillo. Okay, they grew a few little tiny ones. That's literally one tiny one down here, I believe. Let's see if we can get down there, see? And I just fell off. <laughs> but they're really tiny and it didn't grow well. Why? Because like tomatoes, they do need sunlight. And even though there seems to be sunlight now, let me back out of here, there hasn't been sunlight because this tree was full of leaves. And now that it's gone to seed, it's dropped a lot of its leaves during this stage. It will grow back and it's let more sunlight in. But during the summer, this area was so shaded that a lot of the things did not do well. And maybe, maybe this tree forced the papaya to take off because the papaya was trying to get above it. So it's hard to say, cause that's nature, you know, something's in the way, just go past it. 
but as far as like I see there's celery back here you can see there and there's garlic chives garlic chives like I said they're pretty good they can go some sun some shade but your walking onions they really do need sun and even your kale needs sun and that one struggled back there now that it's dropped its leaves it'll probably take off a lot of my cucumbers they just took off and they're almost done but that's okay because in the same container I planted tomatoes let's walk around here and what's happening now is as the cucumbers are dying back and there's still some now this is actually Korean melon coming from the other side um, as the cucumbers are dying back the tomatoes are taking over and this has happened all over my yard as one thing dies back something else takes over and this tomato plant most likely will go all through the winter and that's my hopes they're little tiny tomatoes and that's what I like I like the little tiny ones that one already split that one's been on there too long you see and Gary picks and picks tomatoes constantly he's always eating tomatoes okay uh, let's see what else not much new that I can think of here here's the papaya trees I know they're not trees so you don't have to come in underneath and go they're not trees they're plants I know but they look like a tree and they're doing quite well and he's getting ready to harvest another one and there's another papaya I love the papayas just think these came up in my compost bin what now are they going on three and I never had any intentions of ever growing papaya trees of any type just never even thought about it and they started coming up and I left them and then Gary did go out of his way to plant some and these I left and I composted next to them see my compost containers and they just took off Gary's did not and he couldn't figure it out he said I've got him in a better place and all this no nope, they're heavy feeders so in nature you got to go back and think about nature they would be in like a jungle with so many papaya plants growing and they'd be dropping their leaves and they'd be dropping their rotting fruit and this is what they would be feeding on I mean look at how much fruit there is you have to think about this this would drop yes the animals would be underneath and they would be eating it and dragging it all over absolutely but the point is they would be feeding the plants would be feeding off the fruit they're dropping and they're not feeding off the fruit they're feeding off the fungi and everything that would come to eat that fruit and then of course the animals would be eating it and some of the animals would eat the seeds they'd wander off they poop the seeds out and you'd have this growing everywhere and on top of that they would roll some of them would roll somewhere and some of them would get moved to different reasons animals carrying it off bits and pieces so it all goes back to nature everything is nature and that's what I just love about this see here's a compost bin I've got tomatoes and yes you've got it probably like 30 40 little papaya trees plants coming up in there from the seeds because I do compost papaya in there okay so that's what's going on here these are not doing and these aren't even supposed to be there those are two orange trees and I think that's an avocado in the center I don't know what I'm doing with that I mean I just put that there oh there's my pomegranate I got a pomegranate planted this from seed okay and another pomegranate over there let's swing around isn't this beautiful and let's go see the wall okay now we're at the wall there's my bathtub I haven't done anything with that yet I want to plant in there and put a water fountain in there my mother wants me to do something with a faucet we have gotten lots of squash off of this now what happened here is I had rabbits and different things coming to it and starting to eat off of it so I had to wrap it with tool so hopefully we'll get some more and then another squash plant came up there and this is just a jungle of tomatoes there's all kinds of tomatoes through here and we eat tomatoes off of this constantly so that's our jungle of tomatoes and those are both growing in well, let's see hold on look who came to visit okay we're back that was the rabbit he's not visiting he's eating my stuff uh he lives here he doesn't even mind me okay so that's the tomatoes we're eating off of and then we got some red swiss char that came up I just grab seeds and I throw seeds everywhere and they come up everywhere and another moringa and look this one's got pods too not as big as the other but still doing really 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 nice we thought this one died last winter it was a stick there wasn't a leaf on it and I told Gary I think it's dead but he said nope it probably isn't it's probably gonna come back and it did so that's that and then I've got cucumbers I've got to go take off 
Still growing cucumbers, and that's in my compost bin here. Oh, I think that is the sign of snail. And I have an idea of what to do. So I can take care of that problem later. All right, celery. And then I've got some squash seeds I put here. And I put a cage over it so nothing will eat the seedlings for now. Once it gets big, I'll take the little cage off. It's an eggplant. It's struggling, but it's doing good. But those are yellow, so those will have to come off. There is a purple one in the back. Can't reach back there because they have spikes. But see, there's a nice one back there, and I should take it off. Still throwing stuff in that one. Have not planted anything. All right. I got the scrub jays here. Let's walk over to the truck bed. Hard to see in the shadows, but there's a little pomegranate that I planted there from seed. And then I kept these covered in case I want them because I didn't want the rabbit seed them. They're growing in the ground, red Swiss chard. And not my, I really haven't done anything in here. Yes, that was a lizard that just ran by. Again, this is his territory. I've got the beautiful red Swiss chard. See how some of it is really red? Isn't that gorgeous? So I try to keep track of that. And then I've got a lot of it's gone to seed. I've got some green Swiss chard in here. And then I've got, I am not, a Korean melon. I put some Korean melon seeds in here. So they're starting to take off. I have an avocado tree I still don't want. Um, that's basically it. I mean, and, and then of course walking onions. These are all walking onions. See, you can eat the bottom if you wanted to. They grow a tiny onion. But my walking onions are in here. I, I've got an idea now because I didn't want to grow squash. Some years ago we grew spaghetti squash in here. We ended up with over 50 of them and we got sick of it. And Gary doesn't like the taste of it. He's not, he's just not crazy about it. I don't know why we ate it. We didn't like it. Gave some to my daughter. I mean, it was good. No, don't put me. Don't get me wrong. It was good, but I guess he's not real big into baking it and shredding it up, and putting the tomato sauce. He's not real big in all that. And we did it different ways. And he prefers zucchini, and he doesn't mind pumpkin and other squash. I haven't grown this year. I just thought about that. So I've been thinking of putting compost bins on top. Now, why would I go to this trouble and put it on top of the truck bed? Well, I know for sure I'm going to keep the rabbits out. Now, as far as the squirrels, probably so. I probably can keep the squirrels out of this. And the reason is, this is sitting right in the open. The rabbits can't get in. The squirrels could. They would have to go up the wall. But they're open, and what sits up here is a lot of hawks and they're not really wanting to be out in the open. And the other thing is, yes, the coyotes do come through here too. So this is not their favorite spot. As far as the rabbits, yes, they like this because they tuck under that truck bed. And so for them, it works out really well. So I, you know, the rabbits do like it, but that's why I have to cover it. If I don't cover it, they'll eat anything on the ground. And they didn't eat the pomegranate tree, but they'll eat anything they can get their teeth on, especially here because they live under that truck bed. So, I've got different ideas. I've just got so much to do. It's not like I can come out here and do one thing. I still have to work. And of course, here is Gary's wood chips. So, pretty much, maybe I'll end this video with my black face. But, he is going through his wood chips. He's got, of course, this is nothing. This is nothing. He's got massive piles and mountains down by his, which he's moving to. But this is great because they've been sitting here now for over a year, some of these piles. And all I have to do if I want some soil for something, I just dig in the center. It's already broke down. The fungi's gotten in there and broke it already down. And I just go in there and I can grab some and use it for different things if I want. So that's really, really good. So that's it for now. Every, and there's my rosemary, of course. I don't think I brought up the rosemary. But these papayas amaze me. I think I amaze myself sometimes. So that's what's going on. It's nice and empty here. I mean, look how much we could grow in this area. This is massive. It's hard to tell because of all the wood chips. It's, this is as big as a football field. But here's the thing. We have family parties here. And this is really the only place that people can come and park. You can park 
dozen, couple dozen cars here. You could even park more down below. Okay, that noise you hear, I believe, is a woodpecker. That's a scrub jay screaming. And the other one that's got that twill to it is probably a woodpecker. But going back to this, yes, at some point if we wanted to, and we didn't want to have family parties. So you can't really park on the street. There's no street parking. So we do that, but I don't know. Right now we'll leave it. We don't need this area. It's a beautiful flat area, but notice what he's done. He has covered this whole area with wood chips and I've noticed he keeps putting more and more and more out. This was like bedrock. It was hard clay. It, this has been obviously years ago, it's been dug out. So you wouldn't be able to really grow anything good in, in here anyways. He's been putting layers of wood chips. So by putting layers of wood chips, he's building the soil here. So at some point, you know, seeds could just drop and take off growing. So who knows, but it, this is massive. This is really nice. And the kids like playing and family comes over, they play ball and stuff here too, even on the wood chips. But yeah, he has to move everything. I've got a birthday party coming up, my granddaughter, so he'll be moving some of his stuff so people can park. We tend to do the parties here because we have the room and it's a big family. Okay, so now we're back in my garden. Just a note, you think you put chain link up and you're gonna keep rabbits out? You will not. Anything a rabbit can put its head through, they can get through and see the bottom of that gate's got even a bigger hole which means a, rabbit can, a bigger rabbit can get through there. But anything a rabbit can put its head through, the rest of the body will follow through. So that's it, we're back in the garden. It's so green, I can't believe it. I didn't even realize how pretty it was. Look at all the butterflies. There's been a lot of butterflies, little tiny silver ones, look at this. I have all these little silver butterflies all over the mint, and then there's been black ones. Ah. Uh, the other day, I came over here to do, well, I came over, I was here in the garden, and I was going to do a video, and I opened up the door, and a black witch moth came in. That was scary. I was working on my water fountain, my buckets, and it tried to get through the window, and the window was closed. So, okay, and at first I thought it was, oh, a monarch, because it was so big, but I didn't see any color. And the worst part was... It couldn't get through the window. So what it ended up doing is it went over and looked for a door and it found a door and came in. And that was scary because I couldn't believe it tried to get in and it did. And we did end up getting it out. Isn't this beautiful? This is amazing, all the hummingbirds. Just on these two feeders alone. The other ones, I think they emptied the other one. Oh, back there. It's full of hummingbirds. This is what I have every day out my kitchen window and all over. So I wanna get my act together and get a really good hummingbird one together with lots of questions and stuff. Oh, and look, Gary came home with this yesterday. He was all excited. He said, somebody down the block threw out a great big umbrella because I was using a small one. And I said, well, are you getting it? He goes, do you want it? And I said, if you want it. I said, can you throw it away if it's no good? He goes, yeah. So he ran back and got it. It was broke. Look. See, it had that thing broke. So we did duct tape it up and we put a new rod in there. So it's being held there. So he said I could do a video out here in my garden in the shade because I was using a little umbrella. And we'll just leave it here. And as long as it lasts, it lasts. And he said as soon as it breaks or the fabric you know, is no good because it's not a new umbrella. After all, somebody tossed it. He said he'll take it and he's going to build himself something out of it. So I get to use it now and as soon as it falls apart, he'll build something with it. So maybe I'll put an ending on there with my black face and maybe I won't. Okay, the garden tour is over. And you heard in the garden tour what happened. I was working late last night in the garden, in the dark, and I felt something, but I wasn't sure what. And then later on, it started swelling bigger and bigger, and I've got a bite there. I've got one here and one right here. So the only thing I can think of 
I've been bitten by spiders before because of the way it swells and it kind of gets wet. <laughs> um, it's a spider bite. So what I've done and what that is, is activated charcoal. And that is mixed with a little bit of Benadryl, actually two pills of Benadryl, 25 milligrams, one activated charcoal capsule, and then a little bit of coconut oil, and I'm gonna add in a little bit of powdered, um, I'm gonna crush an antibiotic and put that in. If the swelling doesn't go down, I most certainly will go to the doctor. The problem is, and I've been there, as soon as you go to the doctor, they look at you and they go, oh yeah, look at this, you got bit by something. Let's put you on antibiotics for eight to 10 days. I don't know if I need it, and so I wanna give my body a chance to see if it can do something first. The activated charcoal, that will draw out some of the toxins, and the coconut oil, you know, the coconut oil is to make it stick. That's the main thing, is to make it stay where it's supposed to be because activated charcoal is powder, and of course Benadryl, even the generic, is powder, so you need something. And I did put a teeny bit of hand cream in that's got no, you know, no perfume or anything to make it stay. So it will stay on there. I'll keep an eye on it. If it's not better, let's say by tomorrow, then I'll go ahead and go in. I just don't want anti antibiotics. So this is a concoction on my face, and hopefully it will draw whatever toxins that the spider had. If not, I will go to the doctor. So have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.